Before the interview, Jaylee, you were talking about being a nurse. What do you do? So I'm a nurse on a um, med surge floor. And so I take care of people daily who are very much in need and frequently in as much um, mental and emotional pain as physical pain. And so that brings things down to reality and um, just really makes you focus on things that are important in life. Have you seen a lot of death in your line of work? Um, no, that's not something that I deal with a lot personally. It's something that I would um, like to. Actually, I would like to be a hospice nurse um, because I think death is very sacred and um, especially for Christians, but I mean, just for anyone, it's a time to minister to that person and to their family. Um, but it's not something that I deal with on an everyday basis or anything. Well, I have to commend you for the career path that you've chosen. I know it has a lot of demands. It's very hard on a person, but it's a needful thing. And I'm sure the people that you and the other nurses help are very grateful, although you don't always get that, and you probably won't. But I thank you. Have you given much thought to the afterlife yourself? Yeah, so I can't really remember a time that that wasn't something I thought about frequently. Um, I grew up in a Christian home with parents who love God, um, heart, mind, soul, and strength, and they didn't do that perfectly, but um, they do it every day, and they don't give up on Him, um, and so that was very impactful. And um, at 14, I made the decision to um, become a Christian with my own life and while that didn't really change much of what I was doing it <clears throat> um, did forever change um, my standing with God I believe that I was um, innocent up until that point um, but that I had reached um, a level of maturity where I needed to make the decision to walk by faith for myself and so I decided to be baptized, and I did that not knowing everything perfectly, not knowing all of Scripture, but um, by faith and believing that Christ is who He says He is, and that He um, put His Spirit in me on that day and washed away my sins, and that because of that, I have eternal life with Him. And there's a lot we don't know about um, the afterlife in heaven and exactly what all of that will look like. But I know confidently that I will be with God and that I will be at peace and that there will be no sadness or difficulties and whatever it looks like, it will be okay and it will be better than anything we could imagine with our earthly minds. And so that brings um, me a lot of comfort and hope on hard days. Jaylee, a lot of people think that going to heaven has something to do with being a good person or it's some ritual that they must perform. What do you think? I, um, I do my best to follow what I see in Scripture in my daily life. But I certainly don't do that perfectly. Um, and I like to use the analogy that um, it's like using a measuring stick. And if you had a really long piece of rope and you were told to cut it into one foot pieces and you had a ruler to do that, um, at the end it might not have been exactly perfect. You might have been a couple inches off but you don't quit using the measuring stick just because you can't use your own tools perfectly. And so you keep using the Word of God not to measure yourself against, but just as a guide for your life. Um, let's, let's try using the Word of God as a measuring stick. Let's explore that for a moment. 
If you and I were to look at the Ten Commandments, which is God's laws, some call them the moral law, if we were to keep those 100%, we would be righteous. So you can measure our life by that standard. When we break those commandments, then we would have a debt to the law. It becomes a judicial matter. And all debts to the law must be satisfied. So for illustration, I want to look at a few of them to see how well you've done. And then we'll come back and get your thoughts on it. Can you handle it? Yep. Jaylee, like me in your whole lifetime, have you ever lied? Yes. So we have a debt. Yep. Have you ever stolen anything? Probably. Dishonored or disobeyed your parents? Yes. That was the commandment that came to me when I was a teenager. Because I was a terrible kid. <laughs> have you ever murdered anybody? No. I didn't think that you had. But the Lord says that even if you call your brother a fool without a cause, we've murdered them in our hearts because it's the intents and motives of our heart as well as our actions. And here's your last one. Thanks for sticking with me. Have you ever dishonored God's name? Yes, sadly. I'm not judging you. I've broken all of these. I'm in no place to cast that type of judgment. But I do this for illustration. But you, like me, have broken these, so we have a debt to God's laws. Debts must be satisfied. Do you know what capital punishment means? It means that the debt must be paid no matter what. Yeah, capital punishment is the death penalty. So we die one day because we've broken these laws. The scriptures say, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that there is none righteous, no, not one. And as is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So by looking at the commandments as a measuring stick, how have you done? I have not measured up, and I am not um, righteous of my own accord, but um, I actually am righteous. And um, I think most people would think that's a very, like, maybe arrogant or just um, wrong thing to say. Um but I am righteous because of the blood of Christ and because I am covered by his blood 100%. That makes me righteous, right? Me, righteousness means right with God. And I am right with God, not because I do everything perfectly, but because he's my Savior and I trust him and he's faithful and he keeps his promises. Um, and the other part of the verse that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God is and are justified freely by his grace and that is my standing with god well said well said if you were to die and met god in judgment and he judged you by the commandments we'd be found guilty mm -hmm. but you mentioned the blood of christ yeah. do you understand the legal implications of who jesus is and why he died yes um the legal implications is that there is a judge, and that's God, and I will stand before him. And the blood of Christ is what covers me, and his resurrection is what um, gives me eternal life. That's what proves that he is who he says he is. Um, so I'm covered by that. So you believe that the blood of Christ alone is enough to get you to heaven apart from anything that you must do? Yes. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you're saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest you boast. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So let's stop right here and discuss those two verses. At the beginning of the conversation, you said when you were 14 years old, you wanted to commit your life to Christ, mm -hmm. and you did that by way of the baptism. Mm -hmm. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, the scriptures say, For it is by grace you're saved through faith, mm -hmm. and that not of yourself. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for you to get to heaven apart from the baptism? I um, am not God, and so I do not feel that I can make a statement for every single person, every single soul. 
Um, but I think that we are to do all that we can with the understanding of scripture that we have. And my clearest understanding of that is that baptism um, is not is not the water that saved me. Um, it's it's not even my choice that saved me. It was God alone, and that He has um, instituted a ceremony for us. Um, and this is not in scripture, but just from my own experience, I think it's more just as a kindness to us to have um, a moment marked in time um, because it's easy to doubt and question. Um, so I think in one way that's just a gift for us. Um, but all throughout scripture, starting um, with Noah and the flood and then the Israelites in the Red Sea, um, and many other times, um, water is a symbol of cleansing. Um, there was all kinds of cleansing in the tabernacle, and while, of course, we're not bound to those things, I do think that God kept that symbol of it, um, just just so that we can be reminded um and i believe that um on the day that the church was established paul told those he was preaching to um repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and you'll receive um, the gift of the holy spirit and eternal life and i believe that while it is my faith, um, my belief in Christ shows me that baptism is the step to take. Um, it's what's modeled in scripture um, with the apostles and even by Christ himself. Um, he was not baptized for the forgiveness of his sins, um, but he did that as a model for us and um, as the beginning of his ministry and as it is the beginning of our ministries. And so um, I do think that it's clear in scripture that um, God alone saves us and that our faith is um, the major component of that, but that baptism is necessary. Jaylee, in closing, I want to give you a scripture verse. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, and verse 38, Christ had just been crucified, and the men of Israel were asking, What must we do? And Peter responded to them, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But keeping the right division in mind, as we go through the book of Acts, you'll see a transition of God dealing with national Israel and their rejection of their Messiah to the Lord calling the Apostle Paul then to take the gospel of grace to the Gentiles. So as you read through Acts, you'll see Saul of Tarsus being called and then taken the new gospel. When you read Paul's books, Romans through Philemon, those are the letters to us. And when you make those clear divisions, you'll begin reading letters in your mailbox, so to speak. And Paul tells us that it's by not of anything that we do to be saved, but by believing on the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ for your sin, and that it's a free gift from God. I think there are saved and lost people across all denominations. I don't blow the trumpet of any one particular denomination, but rather 
for the body of Christ, for the believers. I've done interviews with members of the Church of Christ as well as other denominations who believe in the baptism as the mode of salvation. And I've ran into Church of Christ members that practice the baptism but do not believe that that's the mode of salvation. It comes down to the heart between the person and the Lord. Mm -hmm. But when we make those divisions that Paul tells us about, it begins to clear up the muddy waters. So I just urge you, in conclusion, to read Paul's books in contrast to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Lord's ministry, and see that transition to the book of Acts, and then Paul's letters to us, and you'll see a difference. Think you can handle that? Mm -hmm. I've done that, actually. I think you have a good uh, testimony. You have a good... Uh, you had good words to say for other people who may be in the Church of Christ that, or any denomination that believes it's something that you must do to be saved, and it is not. You understand? I disagree, but I do hear what you're saying. So, in conclusion, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn I'm gonna stop filming. I'm gonna walk you through some scriptures real quick. Can you handle it? Mm -hmm.